All right, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachakodash. Double honors to our apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations unto you, elect, across the four winds of this earth, fulfilling mm -hmm. your lots in all truth and sincerity. I'm the brother Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas camp, coming at you all with another lesson through the Spirit. And Lord's willing, this lesson here is edifying. And this lesson is going to be a follow-up lesson that I had done yesterday. And the title of that lesson was titled The True Vine and the Branches, the Heavenly Dominion. And within that lesson, I touched up on the fact that when you read it in 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 25, Micah 4 and 4, and also Zechariah chapter 3, verse 10, mentions how we sat under the vine and under the fig tree. All right. And in that lesson, I went into how that represents us being in the state of sovereignty. All right. And also being under under the protection. All right. Of the governing body. OK. But also too, that fruit represents wisdom as well. That fruit represents wisdom. And that's what I want to touch up on right now. Going into the fig tree. All right. Because when you look at the figs. All right. The actual fruit figs. And you can actually look this up on yourself. But when you look up the health benefits of figs, they're very vast. All right. Even the heavenly father had treated Hezekiah. All right. When Hezekiah was at the boy, was very sick. Matter of fact, I want to find that account. All right. And it's the book of Second Kings. Chapter 20. And the key point is around verse seven, but I want to find a good point. I'll start from the top. And it said in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, thus saith the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass afore Isaiah was gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people. Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. All right. Keep that in mind. He said, I will heal thee. On the third day, thou shalt go up into the house of the Lord. And I will add unto thy days 15 years. And I will deliver thee in this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria and I will defend the city for my own sake and for the sake and for my servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, take a lump of figs. And they turned and laid it on the boil and he recovered. So Hezekiah fell sick and he was sick even unto death. And he was restored 15 years. All right. So when you go into the figs, figs is a nutritious meal. All right. It's very filling. It's sweet. But also, too, it's meant to heal. That's why I mentioned when you look up the health benefits of figs, they're very vast. Now, who knows the ailment that Hezekiah was dealing with? But one thing that we do know that it was an ailment that he had that brought him bitterness to the point where he almost got brought to death. All right. And he was told to eat of the fig and that brought him life. OK, so going back to the point that I mentioned earlier, every man is going to dwell under the fig tree. All right. And under the vine. That means that we were going to have life as well. And we were going to be healed being under that tree. OK, now I want to bring up two accounts. OK, I want to bring up two accounts. Now, the first account is going into the book of John. And I was meditating on this yesterday. All right. When you read John, the first chapter, it's really a very beautiful, a rare, a very beautiful scenario. It's a very beautiful story. When you look at it, because it goes into how the disciples and I will word it as reunited with our Lord Yahweh Shai. All right. Because these men were of the 12. 
And these men were even with Yahweh Shai even before the foundations of the earth. So that's why I use the word reunited with Yahweh Shai. And when you read about the account, it's very beautiful how they found exactly what they were looking for. And they were looking for Yahweh Shai through the scriptures. All right. So when you read about how these individuals found one another and told one another that they had found a Messiah, it's a reunion to a degree. Just as how we had woke up to the truth by watching videos, you might be new to a camp. You come to the camp and it feel like you already known these brothers for a long time. And we talk about that often. But the reason why you feel that way is because you have known these individuals. If you are of the elect, we've all had that relationship even before the foundations of the earth. So when you read John, the first chapter on your own time, think of it, how you woke up to this truth. And how you ran into individuals that were of the same mind and like minded and how you've known each other since the beginning. All right. Matter of fact, before I read that in John, I'm going to actually bring this account here or we'll read this here in Second Ezra. The 14th chapter. Because it also represents prophecy being fulfilled. So when you read John, the first chapter in the account that I'm reading. It's a very key event that it took place because this is prophecy that's being fulfilled. And we're playing this out right now as well. OK, so this is the book of Second Ezra, the 14th chapter. In the ninth verse, I'm going to start at verse eight. It says, Salaki, I'm going to start at verse seven. Second Ezra 14 and seven. And now I say unto thee that thou lay up in thine heart the signs that which I have showed thee. And the dreams that thou hast seen and the interpretations which thou hast heard. For thou shalt be taken away from all. And what does that mean? All right. When you look at it, we've been taken away from worldly affairs. All right. How we think of our families are different. How we think of the people we used to be around are different. We're being taken away from that because the Lord has raised us up to sit in heavenly places. As is written in Ephesians, the second chapter. So it says, for thou shalt be taken away from all and from henceforth thou shalt remain with my son and with such as be like thee until the times be ended. All right. So we've been raised up together to sit in those heavenly places with Yahweh Shai, who was the son that we shall remain with. OK, so I wanted to read this scripture first. And now I'm going to go into the book of John, the first chapter and go into a physical account. All right. Now, keep in mind the fig. Keep in mind them that sit under the fig tree as pertaining to Micah four and four. OK, so this is the book of John, the first chapter. And I want to jump. I'm going to start at verse 44. This is John one and 44 because it's the elect being gathered together. And this is a physical account. Hold on one sec, y'all. All right, the water. This is John 1 and 44. Now, Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. And these are three of the disciples. OK, it says Philip findeth Nathaniel. Now, Nathaniel is also Bartholomew. It's another name for Bartholomew. All right. His real name was Nathaniel. It says Philip findeth Nathaniel and said unto him, we have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write. Yahweh Shai of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. All right. So it shows you, obviously, that these men searched for Yahweh Shai through the scriptures. All right. And some of these men were also disciples of John the Baptist. So they were learning of Yahweh Shai through John the Baptist. All right. Granted, the beginning of the first chapter goes into the baptism. OK, so when you go into that, when they found Yahweh Shai, they went and told one another and Philip ran and found Nathaniel and he told Nathaniel, look, this is who we've been looking for in the scriptures. All right. This is the prophet like an unto Moses. All right. And notice it named him Yahweh Shai of Nazareth, which that had to have been going back to Ezra because in second Ezra, the seventh chapter. All right. That name Yahweh Shai is mentioned. And out of all the prophets. All right. 
Ezra was the only prophet to receive Yahweh Shai to be the name of the only begotten son. All right, which shows you Ezra is also canon. Now, when you continue in verse 46, it says, And Nathanael said unto him, Can there be any good thing cometh out of Nazareth? Because Nazareth was a low level area, okay, like a ghetto. Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Yahweh Shai said, Asalakia. Now, check this out. So now Philip and Nathanael are running to find Yahweh Shai, right? And Yahweh Shai literally was already on his way to them. All right. So Yahweh Shai saw Nathanael coming to him and said unto him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is found no guile. Right. Now, I want to meditate on this real quick. Just meditate on this really quick, because I mentioned earlier. All right. When you when you come together with these unit of brethren. All right. Men that you've never seen before. You already have the relationship with these men like you've already known them for quite some time. All right. Just for, for the believers, even for you sisters, maybe some of y'all might communicate with one another. I don't know. But but pretty much when you run across somebody that truly believes and you have spiritual dialogue and such, it's like I've already known this person. Right. So this is Yahweh Shai, somebody who in his physical flesh at that moment has never met Nathaniel before. So soon as he saw Nathaniel, this is the first thing that he had to say about them, which shows you he's known him from the beginning. Right now, check that out. I'm going to read this in the NLT. It says, as they approached, Yahweh Shai said, now here is a genuine son of Israel, a man of complete integrity. OK, but Yahweh Shai never met Nathaniel before, but he already knew him. All right. He already had a report of Nathaniel through the spirit. He already knew. All right. Never seen him before in his flesh at that moment. Nathaniel's never seen Yahweh Shai in the flesh at that moment. And that was the first thing Yahweh Shai had to say about him. All right. Verse 48 says this. Nathaniel said unto him, whence thou, Salakia, whence knowest thou me? All right. In the NLT, it says, how do you know about me? All right. So it says, Nathaniel said unto him, whence knowest thou me? Yahweh Shai answered and said unto him, before that Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. All right. So Nathaniel was sitting under the fig tree and Yahweh Shai had already known who he was. He said he had already saw him. All right. So you literally have a physical example, a physical account of this man sitting under his fig tree. Now, what, it, what, what could he have been done? He could have been studying. He could have been doing a lot. But all in general, what does that mean? Nathaniel was of good fruit. Nathaniel was good fruit. OK. And not only was he good fruit, but he came from the vine. All right. Because at the end of the day, Yahweh Shai represents the vine. Yahweh Shai represents the tree. Yahweh Shai knows who he is already. Right. So Yahweh Shai had great report to bear about Nathaniel. All right. Because he said he was a man without guile, which shows you this man was of the elect. Nathaniel answered and said unto him, Rabbi. So immediately when Yahweh Shai said that, him, said that to him, you can imagine just sit back and put yourself in Nathaniel Bartholomew's shoes. Sit back and put yourself in his shoes. How the heck did this man see me sitting under this tree? Sitting under this fig tree. How did he know? You know, so immediately with you putting yourself in the shoes of this man, you have no choice but to know for a surety that this man is the Messiah. Indeed, that the scriptures spoke of. All right. It says Nathaniel answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the son of God. Thou art the king of Israel. Yahweh shall answer and said unto him, because I said unto thee. I saw thee under the fig tree. Thou believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. So he believed at that moment, 100% surety that Yahweh Shai is the Messiah just because he told him that he saw him when he was sitting under that fig tree. Okay. Now, again, figs represent healing. It represents being revived. And what was Yahweh Shai doing at the end of the day? All right. This is a period where he was reviving his elect. Gathering them up, joining them together, just as how we do. All right. But ironically, he was sitting under that fig tree. OK, if y'all are following me so far, it's a very big deal. 
All right, because that tree bore fruit. Okay, the tree bore fruit and Nathaniel was sitting under that tree. Was he not fruit meat for repentance? Okay, was he not one of the first fruits of Yahweh Shai? All right. Now, I said I was going to go into two scenarios, right? Because you had Nathaniel, who was sitting under this fig tree, all right, when Philip came to him and Yahweh Shai acknowledged exactly what he was doing, and he mentioned it twice in regards to him sitting under that fig tree, okay? And I went into earlier how figs represent healing, represent life, okay? Prevent death. Now, I brought this, I did a lesson on this a few days ago. And I'm going to go back to it because now you have the account. All right. When our Lord, Yahweh Shai was hungry. OK. And it's going to be in the book of Mark, the eighth chapter. Let's see here. I believe it's in Mark, the eighth chapter. Hold on. I was in Mark 11. Okay, it's in Mark the 11th chapter. Okay. Now, this is Mark chapter 11, verse 11. And it reads, And Yahweh Shai entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. And when he had looked round about upon all things, and now the eventide was come, he went out unto Bethany with the twelve. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree, here's this fig tree again, seeing this fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. So sit back and think about it. Yahweh Shai came to this fig tree, expecting it to have figs, but it had leaves. But at the same time, this wasn't even a time period where the figs were supposed to be on the tree yet. Now, you don't think Yahweh Shai didn't know that? Yahweh Shai already knew that. But this was a symbolic expression of something bigger. Okay? This was a symbolic expression of something bigger. Verse 14 says, And Yahweh Shai answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. Now, Yahweh Shai talking to that fig tree like it's a person. And he's cursing this fig tree, saying, no man is going to eat from you forever to this fig tree, right? And his disciples heard it. Now, the next account is very interesting because this is right after Yahweh Shai cursed that fig tree that it didn't bear fruit. He was upset in the fact that it did not bear fruit. OK. And they came to Jerusalem and Yahweh Shai went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and over through the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And he taught, saying unto them, is it not written? My house shall be called of all nations, the house of prayer. But ye have made it a den of thieves and the scribes and chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him. For they feared him because all the people was astonished at the doctrine. These represented those trees that didn't bear the fruit. All right. Today is these scoffers, those that are pushing a different doctrine, claiming that they know Yahweh Shai. All right. Now, Yahweh Shai, when he first went to that tree, he cursed it, expecting to find fruit, but he didn't. And that's the same thing with these guys that claim to know the truth. And they are not of that true vine versus Bartholomew, who was an example of one that did bear fruit. He was sitting under the fig tree and Yahweh Shai was excited when he first came across him. All right. Because I mentioned earlier how that fruit also represents wisdom. OK. And Bartholomew was full of that. Philip was full of that. The disciples was full of that. But they ate of the true vine, which was Yahweh Shai, who bore fruit. All right. And these 12 bore fruit. But the wicked scribes and Pharisees didn't bear good fruit. They bore evil fruit. OK. Now, I want to read this here in Psalms of Solomon, and I'll end it up here. Lord's willingness lesson is coming together. Now, this here is a song, but it also acts as an allegory. OK, it also acts as an allegory. OK, this is Psalms of Solomon two and one. It says, I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. 
All right. Now, this is talking about the elect. All right. It's talking about the elect of the nation of, uh, of Israel. And the lily is um, Yahweh's favorite flower. And that's written of in um, 2 Ezra chapter 5. OK, it's Yahweh's favorite flower. So he's likening his elect. All right. The, of the lily of the valleys. OK, Yahweh's, um, Yahweh's favorite flower. It says as the lily among thorns, because around us were briars and thorns. OK, that's going to us being in the midst of a wicked nation. All right. So is my love among the daughters. As is written in Jeremiah 6 and 2, I have likened the daughter of Israel to a calmly and delicate woman. Also, as is written up in 1 John or 2 John, he calls us elect lady. It's all allegory. It's, well, not all, but certain of them are literal too. But this here is an allegory. So it says, as the apple tree. Now, just because it says apple, still keep in mind the figs. Because it's still the, uh, the same scenario playing out. All right. As the apple tree. Among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. And who was this beloved? All right, because this lady is singing about Solomon. All right, that is the beloved among the trees. Okay, because we all are referenced as trees. That's why Yahweh Shai cursed that fig tree because it didn't bear fruit. But it was an allegory of these wicked people that don't bear good fruit. Okay, it says... As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. Check this out. I sat down under his shadow with great delight and his fruit was sweet to my taste. And what does that fruit represent? That fruit represents wisdom, knowledge, eating of that fruit, partaking in that. All right. Sweet to his taste, desiring it. Just like Bartholomew was sitting under that fig tree. All right. Just as we are going to sit under the vine and under the fig tree in the kingdom, just as in Solomon's rule, it says every man sat under the vine and the fig tree. OK, so ultimately we're going to enjoy the fruit of the land, but also, too, there's going to be a constant flowing of the heavenly father's wisdom that just pours out. OK, and that was an expression with Bartholomew sitting under that fig tree. And running into Yahawashai right afterward, who is the true vine? And Yahawashai noticed him. Yahawashai already noticed him even before Bartholomew came to him. All right. Yahawashai acknowledged him and told him what he was doing. And you got to look and think, how the heck did he know that this man was sitting there? All right. Because Yahawashai is the true vine. All right. And under his shadow. Those that dwell under his shadow are going to eat of him, man. All right. And we're all under Yahweh Shai's shadow right now. That's why I read in 2nd Ezra 7. I'm sorry, 14. All right. We're going to be with his son and those like him. All right. We're all under the vine. OK. Eating of the fruit. All right. So Lord's willing, that was edifying. Lord's willing, it made sense. OK. I just wanted to touch up on that while it was on my spirit. OK, the spirit's been on me to go into trees and the branches and the fruit all this week, you know, so while the spirit's on me, I'm trying to squeeze all the juice out of that orange as much as I can. But uh, I want to say, Lord's willing, that was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakaqadash, double honors to our apostles and elders, a great millstone, peace and blessing to the elect. Shalom.